which country which country that treated you bad besides indonesia the, 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 the other countries i had a serious problem in uganda again i was met by the military police there i was on approach into entebbe and and suddenly the air traffic controller told me to do a left hand orbit because i had an airliner coming in fast behind me so i did what i thought i was told and orbited round you know an in, an an overflew a magnificent property this beautiful palladian mansion so i was doing a bit of sightseeing as i orbited round to come in and land and as i landed again i met by the military police and it transpired that i'd overflown the presidential palace but i was again put through a 3 hour interrogation by again a very very hostile person and he just sat me down and handed me a brochure and the brochure was the twin towers with the airliner hitting the towers and it was marked you know um confidential whatever and i looked at this brochure and i said i said if you're trying to make some sort of connection between you know an airliner flying into the twin towers and my wood and fabric biplane representing a some sort of security risk to the presidential palace i said this is ridiculous and you're going to look ridiculous if you try to make a diplomatic incident out of this because you know this is this is crazy you know when lady heath flew through here in um in 1928 she had magnificent treatment i said it would be a shame if i couldn't do the same in 2013 but they kept me there for 3 hours and they were threatening to impound the aeroplane and i just said don't touch the aeroplane if you have an issue with this you arrest me you know and and therefore you know you will make this an issue so it was again it, it was frightening and you have this sense that once again i don't know whether they wanted money it was finally resolved he let me go but funny enough it was a woman who walked into the room and i just looked at her in mute appeals if for heaven's sake help me and half an hour later we were released and the next morning i did a media interview and and i did i i i i sort of apologized to the president for overflying his house and i said but if you'd like to come for a ride in my airplane i'll fly over your house so you can see it yourself <laughs> but yeah so it was things like that but it's nearly always it's nearly always the security flying in the post 911 world security and bureaucracy it's a huge issue and it's one of the huge challenges of flying a vintage airplane through so many different regimes through so many different airports military airports civilian international airports etc hugely demanding really okay and the only other one was um was egypt i must admit i would i would never willingly fly in that country again and again they the, the, the air traffic controllers are controlled by the military they are absolutely terrified of doing anything wrong so they treated me as if i was an airliner they wanted me up flying the the instrument routes at 8000 feet in an open cockpit vintage airplane i mean i was up in 50 50 knots of headwind almost going backwards you could i you know it became such a risk even trying to get to your destination and they would say well if you can't make it you land and you knew very well that if you landed they wouldn't let you take off again so once again egypt is an authoritarian regime it was awful it was frightening and when i finally came to leave that country on our final flight we'd had a week of storms there we'd had a mechanical breakdown with the airplane my final takeoff clearance with a 2000 foot cloud base bearing in mind i can't fly in cloud they cleared me to 16000 feet through that cloud so i can't do that i can't even physically do that but they were so ignorant about a vintage airplane like this so i was given what was effectively a clearance for a civilian airline so i took the clearance and accepted it because i knew i'd never be able to get out of the country but i can't even get to 16000 feet in my airplane i can only get to 10000 feet on a clear day and then you run out of power because this is a this is a radial it's an aspirated engine so as you fly up in the atmosphere you just run out of power because the air gets thinner and thinner mm. so i just took the clearance headed straight out over the water and dropped to 160 feet and that's how I flew the mediterranean so i basically got out of egyptian airspace and they knew i just i just you know had enough so absolutely had enough. but i knew they i knew they would have just sent me back and stopped me from leaving so, so i it was, appalling, it was just appalling and and frankly dangerous frankly dangerous what what the clearances they were giving us but they were so busy trying to satisfy their own military 
and the paranoia in that country and the brutality in that country that I thought, wow, I'll never risk, I'll never do it again.